Welcome back from the breaks break, folks. And boy, do we have a match for you. This is the matchup that the pundits have been hailing all day long for weeks now. They've been talking about this matchup. It's all over the newspapers. It's all over the social media sites. No one, no one can stop talking about it. Cookies, Ariel Arise, one shot. Did I hype it up too much? I... No, I mean, everyone's talking yeah. about this, you know. Biggest from, game of the year. <laughs> from New York City to the Bay, they're talking about this game because this game is absolutely important for playoff seating because all these teams are going to the playoffs guys so we got ariel arise in one shot they can book their tickets to wherever the playoffs are going to be because they're going baby so is um you know reality tv and luminosity so this game is actually of massive importance because guys who do you want gavini or luminosity and silent ends it's well, lose, I, lose isn't it what I, I want right now is is some players I on Ariel Arise cookies. That's what I want. Like, I'm like, the energy around this game is so crazy. Brim, I'm losing focus in my camera. Yes, Ariel Rise. Freak. He's only seven for seven on that entry, guys. And when you look at this team, right? First thing that doesn't pop off the eyeball is firepower. If I'm being completely honest with you, Quartz is getting up there in age. He's about 40 years old now. His knees, they're achy and shaky. He's so, 20. Really, so you what we really need is like freak to really pop off because this isn't popping off freak this he's just kind of existing right now he's getting out shadowed by the gavinis and the silent ends is and he can be better do better that's my analysis do better sometimes, sometimes you just kill me oh my god of course <laughs> I mean, am I lying? I, Spot the lie, Brim. He needs to I, do better. He does. Hey, I mean, that's hey, a fair you point. Speak, you only speak truths, cookies, so I can't fault <laughs> you for that. And if you go off camera again, it's going to go out of focus, okay? So just stay on camera. <laughs> Tanner, the man who always stays on camera, you got to talk a bit about one shot. Do I need to, like, leave camera now? Is that my cue? Yeah, you got I mean, to do a little song and dance. And I mean, I know, I know Cookie's just talking about how Freak's not having really, like, the best performance of his stage or of his career. But that's what, you know, you could take that and apply that to basically all of one shot right now in stage three. They're just a team that like has been good. Like they've been a good team throughout most of the year, but somewhere along this uh, stage, they've just kind of fallen on the backside. They're currently sitting one and three in their, in their uh, play er, in the games that they've played. They've won one. They've lost twice in overtime. They've lost once in regulation. They just haven't looked like the full effort kind of team that we're looking for. Uh, the one player, though, that has stood out to me quite a bit, though, is Razor, um, and specifically on the entry department. That guy is getting picks. He's finding ways to get these picks and, and uh, at an alarming rate. He'll get like he'll go plus four multiple games in a row for the last two games, uh, and yet one shot's still not winning these games. So there's something going on here. The entry department's not lacking, um, and I guess we're going to have to go into this game to kind of figure out what's going on. Yeah, definitely a deeper analysis needed, but that'll come in a second with the uh, critical points. But we got to do critical points for Ariel. Ariel Arise, first off, Cookie. Ariel, Ariel. A little, <laughs> yeah. a little. Getting ahead Ariel. of myself. I'm just so excited. As I said, the pundits have been talking about this for weeks. Well, the pundits have been talking about how Tones has been playing. He's been a little careless. Okay? He's been a little reckless. And uh, and it's, it's not acceptable. Because, you know, I'm out here talking about Freaks only got a 1.0 whatever. He needs help. Mm. Bones. Bones is just walking in. You know, they both like shade their heads and their eyebrows. Tones is just walking in with the case across the map. I'm not I'm not making that up. No, he did that. He did that. I think he was mm. first pick, four out of six rounds. Last I game? need some I need some coagulation. Attack half. I need some I need some coagulation out of that guy. And I need something else is out of that, Burial Rise. Is that the word? <laughs> it, it is a word. It is a word. It, it is. But the word. But it doesn't is that make the word any you're sense looking for. Here. Listen, I also need some some proper entry game. Okay. May, and maybe a thesaurus? Or... Yeah, perhaps. When when, I, when Ariel Arise can actually get the entry kill, you saw Freak was only 7 for 7. But when he gets his 7, they convert 70 to 80% of the time, depending on if it is attack defense. It's 70% plus of the time. They convert those entry picks to victory so they need to play from the driver's seat they need to be aggressive people are making fun of my coagulation everywhere it's okay they just need to be a better entry team today they need to hit one shot in the mouth well hey at least their uh percentages are better than yours with words so moving <laughs> on to one shot you know 
this is another team. One thing I wanted to bring up before you get into your critical points, Tanner, is their loss last week or in their last play day to Luminosity was pretty bad. But Luminosity has been pretty great. So how much do you take away from that? Uh, you, you got to take quite a bit away from it, unfortunately. Both of these teams are going to be meeting each other in the playoffs. Yeah. And if they want to have any success of winning the playoffs, because there's no real big points for coming in second place mm -hmm. right now, you have to win in order for it to matter. So it, it matters a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the biggest thing that they need to work on here is just converting their entry engagements into wins. Like I said, when I was talking about the roster, Razor's able to get a lot of really good opening picks. Prod's able to get some opening picks. And they're able to, like, you know, make something happen at the beginning of the round. But then there's just a fall off after Razor dies mid-round. It seems like they're not able to enter the building. They're not really taking map control. Prod's been playing on this flank role slash flex role. And it's been very kind of baiting uh, mm -hmm. his teammates a lot. He's often last alive um, mm -hmm. and padding his stats. So it's just like there's, like, yeah, you might have great stats on some of these players. But they're not really getting any wins out of it. It doesn't really matter. Right? So that's why you always got to take the stats in context. And I think the really big thing that they need to do uh, in order to have any success against a team like Aerial Rise is they need Swalen and they need NVK yeah. to play to their potential. Because both of these players, with the exception of maybe one really good game from NVK a couple uh, a couple play days ago, mm -hmm. they have both looked very consistently bad and not really impacting the game in a meaningful way. So if both of those players can find a way to show up today, it'll definitely uh, go a long way for one shot and a chance of beating against Aerial Rise. Well, yeah, because we know how much they can change the pace, the tone of a game just by when they play to their full potential because they have that. What I need, Tanner, now is I need a decent map veto because one shot needs to hit a map that, that they're going to play well on. I mean, it's interesting with both of these teams, the way they kind of stack up in their map pool. They both like to play unconventional maps like Chalet, Bank, Skyscraper. So I'm kind of expecting one of those maps. There you go. But you see Aerial Rise banning out bank and chalet which kind of leads me to kind of going more towards the direction of skyscraper maps like clubhouse and border have been perma bans for for one shot for a minute now so there you go we're going to be going to skyscraper now both of these teams have looked good on this map uh as of this stage uh or as of the last two stages this was a map that aerial rise has been playing since it came into the map pool in stage one i've looked really proficient in it and the one map where one shot looked really competitive against a really competitive team, which was reality TV. They managed to take them the distance here on this map and lose in overtime. Uh, I think it was uh, eight to six, but they still looked very competitive. They looked like they're in the driver's seat. It was just a couple of mistakes that they were making that allowed reality TV to kind of pull it to overtime in the first place and then to be able to win it in the end. So both of these, mm -hmm. this is a good map for both these teams. Now cookies, as we alluded to before this type of game, it has two layers to it. It's not just, a game to try to improve your seeding and playoffs like these are two teams that will could possibly face off against each other at some point so do you take i don't know extra notes like maybe or not just as you're playing the game but even the prep work going into it there's just so much more that you need to learn about each other it's not about that brimstone okay <laughs> never mind forget me i'm not gonna say you know what it's anymore, about then. it's about the What's passion about it's about your pride at this point because let me tell you if you play these guys again if you're one shot or where lies right and you and you 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 go back to this game today and you just laid an egg and you have to play them in the playoffs after you laid an egg you're not going to be confident against this team in the playoff you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. you got to know mm -hmm. what you want to know to know what you want I, I i counterpoint to that i think if you laid a goose egg on a game like that wouldn't that give you a lot of extra motivation to get your button gear for playoffs it could work for making you better it could work both ways but I think it's more likely you want to get confidence. I'm I'm gonna throw a wrench into it right now, Cookies. What are you throwing? I think you lay a goose egg, and it's actually a reverse plan where you're like, we're not gonna show anyone anything. If you don't show up, they don't know anything. About <laughs> I us. don't think that works though. For the chess, listen, Connor's not risking here. it all. Connor's not here. risking it all for the small was here, play. Connor's, Connor was here. He would be very upset at you for making that statement. <laughs> Teams that have gone into playoffs cold. Or lost to somebody and kind of sleaze their way into the playoffs. They don't do good. Nope, that is true. You want to set the tone. Mm. You want to hit people in the mouth. You want to get, uh, we won today. We're going to win three months from now, three weeks. I don't know when the playoffs are. But we're going to win then uh, and now. Counterpoint again. Oh, boy. Parabellum. They barely got into those playoffs yeah, last but they, year. They, counterpoint to that, they were winning into the playoffs. So they kept riding the win streak that they had. Uh, I guess. Yeah, I guess. exactly. But they, they needed another weak. team to lose. They even that they were they were limping in so hard. 
It's they very need simple. someone to fall flat. You want momentum, court. Brimstone. Mm. You want the higher seeding. You don't want to play Gavini first round. You mm. don't want any of that. You want to. You want to demoralize this team. Whoever. So, are these the two teams? Because I don't know if anyone has any uh, stuff uh, readily available. But are these the two teams that would be third and fourth? As of yes. right now. As it stands right now. As it stands right now. So whoever then, wins, yes. ironically, yeah, because we would have said. reality TV, then nope. luminosity. No, it's luminosity. Well, luminosity, then reality yeah, TV. Yeah, so whoever wins this game gets to play that Gavini. So maybe you do want to lose Ooh. in the first round. I don't Ooh. know. I mean, ultimately, oh my, you have oh to my. beat everybody. You have to All beat everybody. All of a sudden, that goose egg is looking like a Fabergé egg cookies. You can see where this gets complicated, and the easiest solution is just <laughs> coming out today. You had a good week of scrims before this. You come out today, and you win this game. Doesn't matter who you are, who you get, who do you play, win right now. <laughs> so what what were your what were your predictions? I can't yeah, just I what, we got I so picked, deep in conversation. I, picked, I think I picked one okay, because they've been my critical point actually got controversially changed. Okay, but my critical point oh, oh, there were a bunch face. of swear words in it. The audience didn't need to see that. Course, That's why it was literally what Listen, my wrote. point we was originally figure. my point was originally like one shot should maybe stop scrimming and play to win, because it is a controversial topic at this juncture. That one mm. shot is just kind of showing up and hoping that they look good in playoffs later. So then why do you have them picked as the team <laughs> yeah, that's going to win? Because they're going to turn process. that around today. Because maybe oh, they realize now, <laughs> like, maybe that's a little silly. And maybe we should uh, get ourselves in gear. Right? That's my that's my hopes that they're going to come out here on Skyscraper and everything. Look good. Look like contenders and not look like contenders. I mean, they do look good on Skyscraper, so this is definitely a map they could do that on. Exactly. So now, Tanner, you've got Aerial Arise. Is that just a matter of they've had a better stage, or do you have any specific reasoning for that? No, I'm just a biased analyst. I was going to say that if you didn't. <laughs> so I'm glad you said I was going to say this guy <laughs> bought them. They bought them. only picking them. I'm blood paid them. for, boys. No, it's... Uh, uh, <laughs> no, I, I, I really like how they've been playing recently. I, I was talking to them uh, in between the two play days from last week to this week, uh, they addressed a lot of their issues. Like there was a big issue with Tones not staying up, you know, maybe him doing too much, playing a little bit, you know, a little too fast and he's just tone it down a little bit. I really trust in the coaching staff. I know they picked up uh, a performance or they're trialing a performance coach right now. So like they have so much backing them. They've been playing really well. I actually do think they're going to win this game. Well, there's only so much talking you can do before you need to put pen to paper the biggest game of the year. Okay, it's it's gonna be a big game, but I won't I won't stop the cap. I'll, so... I'll, stop, I'll, I'll stop the cap in. Okay, Ariel <laughs> Arise taking on one shot. We get to see him on Skyscraper. John, I'm very excited because Skyscraper is a real fun map. We saw one shot, they were good on Skyscraper. Ariel, they are, you know, new map kings. They were very good on Skyscraper. They haven't played it yet, which is why I said were. So I'm I'm excited. This is this this looks to be yes. a very non mid game. I, funny enough, I tried to ignore the 7 1 loss one shot had against Luminosity and actually went <laughs> to the reality TV game they played, which was also on Skyscraper. So my notes are going to be good for one shot. Oh my God, it's crazy. I get to do my job properly. Wow, you take notes? You know, I, I try. Everything. Don't have anything up here. It's just most in here, I can't write very well. Never thought how to. I can't read much either. Good thing the yeah. game is a lot more visual than it is actually reading. That would be very dangerous. For me, you gotta least. read the names of the players. Ah, eh, that's why I botch them all the time. To, uh, pay attention to that. Anyways, <laughs> for one shot, especially for their attacks, if they end up, I think the conversion rate was discussed a little bit on the desk, but making sure that they don't do not lose their steam after getting the opening kill, that will definitely affect their attacking rounds in a positive way. Timing was definitely a big issue for them, even if they worked that first opening kill, if they were not in the right places to deal with those secondary extensions, if they were not in the right places to execute after those extensions were cleared, that would grant Reality TV their, well, Reality TV special of working back gunfights when they were at a disadvantage to now either equalize or actually be in the front seat of potentially taking that round. And besides that, they looked pretty good on the defensive side as well, especially their anchor games when they were able to fall back towards the site. They had pretty much every single angle on lockdown when given the chance to do so. So for them, this is not a bad map selection, but Aerial Arise, they also love to go here to Skyscraper. So this could most definitely be a close game, especially since for Aerial Arise, they haven't really been slouches here in stage three like they were, you know, last stage, for example, Harrison. Absolutely not. They unmitted themselves and they currently find Fantastic. themselves in third place they have 10 points meanwhile one shot 
Munchausen's down there with a measly four as of right now in this current stage. However, in terms of the overall year standings, John, they are tied at 45 points. Not only that, but what makes this a little bit more interesting is this is a revenge match for Quartz. He was dropped from one shot, then joined Gaming Gladiators, then left Gaming Gladiators for Ariel Arai. So we'll see if Quartz already uh, was successful in one revenge game. We'll see if he's successful in the second. Starting out here on T and Karaoke, a couple of shields in the pocket of Ariel Arai's could probably utilize them to have a longer emphasis on that extension game. Again, I mentioned you've got that early roam presence. For example, this would probably be closer towards, you know, office and exhibition. Maybe you have someone roaming on the bottom floor as well, if you prefer to do that. And then you can fall back to all the utility that's placed usually near drum with one deployable shield and then another one towards that trop, uh, top dragon position that's a little bit closer towards highway slash catwalk. For Air Rise, they do have someone playing underneath at the moment. They did get droned out, but... If they can stay alive and, you know, waste some good time, they could potentially deny any of that grenade presence underneath since there is both NVK on the sleds, sledge pardon, and Razor on that nook. So the potential to roam underneath and then maybe once they get that map control, blow people up through that soft pressure, that could be huge for one shot to get a good opening kill. Speaking of, they had a drone spotting Freak. Fire came his way through one of the walls. He has since dodged them. He's just peering at those footholds open under the main wall in office. He'll start to dip back, spot the drone, I believe destroy it as the rest of the attack starts to come in, sledge their way into office, and begin the clear inside the map. Closest player to them happens to be Reed Adams on the bandit, hiding behind the dragon. He has support from Jay behind a shield as well. And anyone will tell you, having to fight through the legs of that dragon really sucks if you're the one... That's not right up against it. Once this wall gets opened up, it might be the proper call for the bandit to swing wide and work a kill or completely fall back. Currently behind the natural cover of that dragon pedestal still, not having that single wall opened up. So he's relatively safe for now. But once someone begins to hop in, that could be some pretty hot water for him. But there he goes, takes the engagement once he realizes a lot of pressure is put towards him. The C4 to get a confirmation will not connect, but instead the bullets onto Reed's head will, as Swaylin technically gets that first opening kill, and Razor can now be revived once they know there's no one playing in the back of Dragon. Only Jay will persist on that deployable shield. And Jay has no C4, Oof. but he does have bullets again. A player going for an explosive gets shot right in the head. Swaylin. Responded onto by Jay, who has been a warrior for Aerial Arise so far. Freak, another kill, looking for a second onto the window. Kilo can't find the angle. The Thermite's now dead. Prod and Razor are the only two left alive for one shot against four. Low HP Freak could be dead soon as Razor's looking to find the kill, but he's also got to worry about the angle from the drum doorway. No reinforcement means no rotate. He's got to work his way all the way around the map to join back up with Prod. Fighting against Jay, who's got an angle behind the bomb chassis to let the Goyo pack rip. Further delaying one shot's push in, at least through that wall. They've still got the doorway to work with, and Prod will now back off, working his way towards that balcony. Alibi, I believe, revealing his position with those pings. Prox as well, revealing the position of these players. Prod goes down through the wall to Tones, and Razor's left with one HP against the world. Five seconds left, no one to find. Tones has already dipped out of karaoke. No case control means the round is lost. Tones puts him out of his misery, and Ariel take round one. And I'd have to say a fantastic hold by Reed Adams, basically just sitting in a death spot. And although he eventually did die and couldn't even bring down a kill with him, he still wasted pretty much two thirds of that round it was very fast and concise clear by one shot again they had that pressure underneath and they were working around your offices so that roam game felt you know pretty hesitant to wanting to stay there so they quickly moved a little bit closer towards the bomb site but then you had one shot hit that brick wall of dragon itself although they were able to get one of the side walls opened up to force reed adams all the way in the back behind the dragon pedestal with no one being on that single dragon window he was still pretty safe and was just forcing one shot to have to swing into a potential danger zone with not only himself still in Dragon, but Jay not too far behind, still comfortably behind the shield as a big majority of that utility 
was put all into clearing out that player that was directly on the dragon position. Really good job by Airler Eyes to make sure that one shot really couldn't push past that choke point, granting themselves already a good looking round on their defensive side. But we all know how defensive sided Skyscraper can be put in the right hands. Yeah, it uh, tends to really swing one way or the other. Not very often do we see a really even Skyscraper at the half. Tones will now don the Frost that Freak played last round. Freak is on Wamai. And Reed is on Capcan. A lot of Capcan being played between these last two maps. I think more Capcan than we've seen like throughout the whole stage already. Yeah. And I do welcome it. Capcan's fun when he works. So we did see him pretty frequently, especially in like stage one. Now I had a mini ramble about that. I think on like one of the first few play days. But yeah, when there's a lot of map you got to clear out and you're not always paying attention to door frames, you might get lucky and get some sort of kill off those EDDs or at the very least info. At the, at the end of the day, info is king in a game like R6. And so far for one shot, they're gathering good info at least towards the T and karaoke side of the map so they can begin to convert their way a little bit closer towards that extension once again in Dragon, but just kind of flipped around opposite. Now you've got people playing with a shield actually near that Dragon spot instead of the top part of it. And now one shot are once again getting ready to set up for that, having someone on the side window, the drone to gather a bit more information. Just only a matter of time before these grenades start flying out. He does have ADSs to cover himself with though, so, you know, he's not just on an island with no utility. A bit of an odd decision. Reed uh, also has impacts rather than a C4. We'll see if that comes into effect later in the round. EMP goes out, as does the Goyo pack, but he's repositioned behind the dragon. Nade comes in, but it banks off the window frame. Quartz seems to have read into it as well anyway. He's since backed off over towards house stairs. One shot pushed very far up, just on the adjacency of that site. More Goyo packs being destroyed by the defense to further delay, but there's no one really pushing in through that window, so that may have been a waste. Freak has another rotate as well. He's got this shield that he's going to start fighting from behind. Both the Iana and someone else trying to dig in from top dragon. The wall behind him falling away to Kilo as well. And this entire side of the map firmly in the hands of one shot. That doesn't mean that they can't fight back. Quartz with the opening pick onto Swaylin. Sway dead first once again. And still, having no one on that single window is granting Quartz the opportunity to stay there. One shot having no clue about Reed's position. Freak as well joining in on the fun. It is just a sea of blue for Ariel Arise as one shot just cannot win a gunfight in this position. So many angles to worry about and not enough information to push in properly. Even just Kilo now in a one versus four, a lot left to accomplish with only 20 seconds left. He finds one onto Freak, but still, a really tough hill to climb upwards from, and Ariel Rise still have all the info in the world, and Kilo does not have a lot of time to get going. Finally, the bulletproof has been destroyed, but Kilo's body has now been destroyed by those lead bullets wielded by Quartz. Ariel Rise take a second win in a row. And not a single operator set foot on the bomb site. That's how good Ariel Rise's holds have been so far. Both rounds, no attacker has touched the bomb side down to another really good extension in through dragon by uh i believe both freak and quartz starting things off wasted a lot of time quartz eventually popped up and got a kill and by the time one shot were actually trying to execute they were so low on time they were so low on info they walked into the crossfires held by ariel and ariel won almost every single gunfight so ariel for the dominant 2-0 plus john i i might add uh, a sea of blue seas tend to be blue john Come on. You could say that. Ariel Rise has a blue logo, but technically so does One Shot. A battle of blue today, I guess. I was just talking about, you know. You know what else is blue? Is, ocean is blue. You said the sea of blue. Yeah. I was like, haha, you don't have to specify, idiot. I don't know. There what is else the is red, blue, There John? is the red sea. It's not red. Anyway, what else is blue? Tell me. The sky. I'm dying to know. And we're on Skyscraper, which, funny enough, is a very red map. So. True. Maybe the sky is also red. You ever, uh, you ever think about how, you know, the, the color I call blue and the color you call blue, we both call it blue, but there's no way to prove that we're seeing the same color? I could be lying to you. That, too. Everyone could be lying to me. There's no way to prove that any color that I see is the same as any color that anyone else sees. You know, what I call blue, someone else might call orange, and there's no way for us to tell. Anyway, Reed 
first to perhaps come under fire as his wall has been opened. He has been droned out, and his barricades are being popped. I don't think he's got any ADSs to assist him as well, so this nade could be the kill. Nope. Reed has already backed off, so wasted nade from NBK. So far for Aerial Arise, they have seen nothing but the color of victory on their defensive side. Key barrier placed. Reed Alex can now stay a little while longer near this Geisha double door, not have to worry about cutoff angle being kept for him. C4 oh, wails oh, oh. out, and NVK just stares death right in the eyes. No fear, but no bloodline wow. left as well. Reed stepping up once again. Down goes Razor, and the only loss of life has been free on the side of Aerial Arise. Still technically a bit of Geisha control. One shot can step into this part of the map, but they'll soon to be greeted by Reed Adams once again. So really, not a lot currently for one shot. They have to reevaluate this position. And the only saving grace for this so far is that, you know, at least you've killed a zombie. You do force Reed off the top floor as well. You don't really force him off the top floor, but he does leave. So one shot have the top floor control, but what can they do with it? No nades. No real vert. Pledges yeah, no soft breach. Prod and Swaylin both have claymores. He goes, yeah. Woo! Claymores on Sky. At the very least, Jay is now dead. The Kilo, but someone has come back upstairs to retake. Quartz misses some crucial shots, though, and now they know. He has lost the element of surprise. The most important in a situation like this. Prod, though. We're going to get a little freaky with it. He's already down the stairs, looking into the site. Swaylin there to support him, but as he swings, Tones guns him down from a long angle. Right in the corner, Reed still plays. Three kills for him on the round. Looking for the fourth as Kilo is stunned. Kilo is concussed, and Kilo is dead. Three kills for Reed, two for Tones, and the round for Ariel. I think we would call that something. At least I would. A body ace, maybe? Ariel Rise still looking pretty strong on their defensive side. And overall, I guess the buzzword of team play here is really speaking to them. You have a lot of coverage. We saw Freak do a good job of making sure that Reed could stay inside of Geisha for a very long time, wasting loads of seconds for one shot. And I did talk about their timing being a small issue for them, especially in the early portion of their Skyscraper match against Rowdy TV. Not only allowing Reed to stay alive a bit longer in Geisha, but him working two separate kills, slowing down one shot tenfold, and then he can just fall back down to sight by his own means and having pretty much a, a perfect crossfire with Tones as well. Both of them trying to watch over anyone entering the bomb site through that double wall leading in through barbecue and making sure that bathroom is on lockdown as well. Really strong opening and end game positions for Air of the Rise. And so far, one shot have not been able to do much to stop those power positions. Indeed. And John, by the way, FYI, I would call that a buddy ace. Yeah. I've been uh, I've been borrowing that term from you. You know how long I've been searching for a turn to be like, man, there's three kills for one person, two kills for the other. Two people got all the kills in the round. Buddy ace is perfect. It encompasses the spirit of the play. Yeah. Been saying that for a long time. I'm, yeah. I'm glad I'm glad it's kind of bled on it is, to someone else. It has definitely caught on, at least with me personally. But, uh, yeah, Aerial Arise. Doing pretty damn well on their uh, uh, defense so far. Reed just missing the bandit trick by a hair. There was nothing to stop him from doing it. Just uh, kind of a, a little bit of a misposition. And, wow, he almost pays the ultimate price for it. Rather, that was Freak. Just narrowly dodges the pre-fire and then almost catches NVK in a corner because NVK was like, hmm, yes. I will go to this corner in front of an open barricade. And now he's 1 HP. So good damage from Freak and he gets away. At least NVK is still alive. Has a couple of grenades left. Again, we saw the pressure that those shields were having over time, even when Reed was eventually killed playing in that death spot over by Dragon. So, still having NVK alive could definitely be a very valuable thing to have moving forward, but it, it feels like as of right now, one shotter once again going to hit that exact same brick wall, and now NVK has finally been finished off wow. by Freak as he pops off two separate kills. Both of your grenades are gone! Reed, honestly, he might be able to stay over by Dragon for a little while longer, but instead he falls back and just dies to Swalen. But again, it doesn't really matter as there is no utility besides that one Selma to break one of those two shields, and... That's if it's thrown correctly. But hey, they got four claymores. Yeah. 
There's a second shield too in drum just to add insult to injury, which Freak peeks off of and then dies. There goes the shield. Court oh. pushes up, dies to prod. A triple kill for the ace. Tomes tucked in the corner might have just been full blinded, but no, Kilo, he's got no idea. Tomes full blinded again, but only after Kilo's death. He and Jay can now consolidate and play with each other, but Prod is the one with the case. Tones staring that Selma in the face, trying to get a pick off of it, off an unsuspecting attacker. Jay taking some damage through the wall. Up comes Prod looking for the fight, but Tones has since vanished. The Houdini to down the hatch. Are we looking to come back up the stairs and rejoin his teammate? Jay, you've got to look at the right angle here. If you don't, you might lose the round. Swaylin staring at the T-wall as Tomes comes from the other side. That could be another important fight. Either of these 1v1s could decide the round right here and now. Prod doesn't look the right way, but Jay doesn't get the kill. Slow reaction from Jay means his death. And Tomes is alone. He's got to win the fight against Swaylin, but it's an ace. How is it possibly an ace? I think the UI just bugged. I'm pretty sure Prod yeah, found I was gonna say, that... some sort of kill. It said a triple kill for Prod at one point. So that just, I don't know. A lot of damage dealt though by both Swaylin and Prod. And you know what the funny thing is too, Harrison? What? If Swaylin had not found that kill in the tones, that flank might've worked because both Swaylin and Prod still had both claimers in their pocket. Quite literally, just not using secondary utility in the slightest. And I thought exactly. one shot we're trying to be proactive about the flank watch, because that was a small issue they had against Rowdy TV on their attacks. So I'm like, oh, Claymores. Seems a little odd to bring multiple since there's like only two stairways you have to worry about. Four might be a bit much, but hey, at least they're bringing it out, not even using it. Little upsetting, but besides the point, one shot, finally have a round on the board as Ariel or I just were way too confident in taking those engagements and were not reaping the rewards of the fact that they killed every single grenade player so they could play behind those shields with no hassle whatsoever. Even if EMPs are thrown at their faces, even if you have someone trying to challenge you directly, no one can break that shield. By the okay. way, Walk of course, it's always important to give credit where credit is due. Uh, if you'd like to look at Pro's stat line, he's 0-3, so no, he did not get the ace. So or it turns out kill, the UI the was line. bugged before because Swaylin got the down on court ah. and prod finished him off so it was actually swaylin's triple kill swaylin since did get prod, so since prod finished him the ui bugged out because for some reason the ui still hasn't been fixed for that but yes yeah, swaylin did get an ace so incredible from swaylin from being one and three to now six and three now he's got a 2.0 kd we love swaylin least able to give his team some sort of reward mostly for himself Let's hope they can keep that ball rolling, though. One shot. Once again, ready to slowly creep their way and deal with that dragon extension. They have someone on that back window rather early. I'm interested to see how aggressive Aerial Arise can be, though, with that clash. Maybe if enough utility is burned away, Reed might just kind of step in and take the place of that util. Could be interesting to see, but so far he's playing a little bit in the back line, just uh, waiting and gathering information with his shield to, to make sure he's not really walking in blind anywhere because he can be very vulnerable put in the right position for one shot to maybe capitalize on that. Yeah, this clash is going to be real cool. Reed is uh, is a clash player. We've seen clash from him a number of times, so he does know how to play this operator. The, uh, the real question is whether his team can play around him. Standing there menacingly, right in the doorway, NVK spots him, probably shouts out, uh, hey guys, there's a clash. We gotta deal with this somehow, and they don't really have a lot of tools to do so. No Nomad, no Capital, no Zoe, no stuns. They do have nades, but in order for those nades to be effective, they've really got to be thrown behind him. And even then, he hasn't taken a lick of damage just yet, so very curious to see how one shot will deal with him, or if they just kill everyone around him. Okay, well, now just down to 50 seconds, and once again, it's the same situation of one shot, just kind of at a brick wall. Now a bit of a plastic one, if you want to be a little more on the literal side of things, as Reed is just still looking down at their oh, opponents. Wow. Jay tries to play off of the clash shield, but NVK just slaps his face away. A second kill now for one shot. Kilo just getting down and finished off by Reed, but still a man advantage for one shot nonetheless. 
That was actually pretty funny. Kilo trying to get the charge on the wall. There's no one there to help him, and Reed found the angle himself. But like I said, one shot have opted for the kill everyone around him strategy, at least so far. Three versus four. Technically a two versus four without the Clash's gun, but the time is so low. Reed is going to continue to stall. Tones two kills before he's traded. Quartz, you got to play off this Clash, man. He's being fed the info, but he's trapped in the corner with the fire. He dies to Razor. The time is triple zero, and Reed cannot make it happen. What a play from Razor to get the last two kills and ensure that the round was not lost off time. And the Vulcan pack detonating right towards him as well by the Samurai Sword forcing him out to take a gunfight. I'm really shocked that we didn't have the Clash actually get rid of their shield early on to maybe try to work a two versus one in that position, but it does seem to be a very dangerous game of cat and mouse if you were to try to attempt that and your Jaeger doesn't swing at the right time. It did seem for Air of the Rise on that round, things were looking incredibly well. The Clash almost seemed to be a complete obstacle that one shot could not overcome. But eventually, they clear out enough space over near Dragon. They work around that portion of the map and still picking off a couple of kills here and there to make sure that eventually the fact that you have basically a shield on your team rather than an extra gun up is actually going to be a major downplay in that round. Despite Freak doing a lot to give information for us to his team. I mean, we saw Tones work off a beautiful double kill with a lot of yellow pings coming out by the Clash and also the Jaeger almost killing Razor, bringing him down to just a sliver of HP. That almost worked out for Air of the Rise, but just barely missing the mark by a couple of things. One shot will try and tie the half now. An attack on to T that worked previously because Swaylin got a Thatcher ace. He's not in the L85 though this time. He's on Osa. Interested to see if he's bringing the, uh, the 5.56 or the PDW. John, do you like T? I do. What kind of? Um, nothing really like specific, just like the generic kind of tea. Sometimes like, you, you like honey with tea, gray. throat. Throat tea is good too, since we talk a lot and sometimes that can mm. hurt. So, that kind of stuff. I had, the green uh, tea is pretty good. Green tea is very good. I love drinking, uh, whenever we go to like a Chinese restaurant and stuff, I always just order tea. Tea is good. I had bubble tea every single day this week. Wow. That was great. That was epic, and I oh, have not gained team. weight. That. Good for you. I, I know. <laughs> I know. I just had to. I just had to throw that out. You there. had to rub it in. I really did. Thanks. Well, so Arrow Rise once again extended over to Dragon. That has been. It's been quite the hold for one shot to try and deal with, whether it be Reed, whether it be Jay, whether it be Freak getting an opening two-piece like we saw in the previous defense of this site, but they're extended all the way up towards office and museum this time. So they really want to hit one shot as soon as they try to enter the building. And as well, still working down in through the bottom floor as well. Gathering plenty of information, so Quartz might feel a little bit more inclined to fall back early. The first initial point of contact has been pretty good for one shot. It's just, again, the aftermath of that tends to be a bit more difficult for them. Will the bandit trick be successful this time? Wow. Perfectly done and timed while Tones across the map is able to kill Razor as he tried working his way up the house stairs. So far, an impressive roam by Air the Rise. And the only thing that One Shot have now accomplished is working their way into office, but it just might be a little too late. And more bandit batteries set up around Reed's position. Once again, the deadly shield we saw Jay playing behind. One shot. They really got their work cut out for them. Drone starts to come in just to confirm the position of Reed. Now they know he's bandit tricking. They spot the shield as well, so now they know. All right, boys. Same setup. We've dealt with this before, but we've lost a couple men in the process. Let's make this quick. Let's make this clean. Another thermite goes out. The last thermite charge from Kilo to go ahead and open up Geisha as well. Only one more summer charge for Prod, but most of the hard destruction has now been done. Once again... The other eyes don't really feel all too inclined, and wow, that shot onto Kilo. Someone's going to have to take his place, most likely, and that's the case gone. One shot have really spread themselves thin on this attack. Wow! Freak! Mr. Freak Nasty! Beautiful shot on Kilo, gives his team a 5 versus 3, but he might be looking the wrong way. 
Someone's already covering his gate of breach. You gotta pay attention to that drum doorway. There's two attackers stacked up there. He'll take the fight. Down goes one, but can't land the second. Prod and NBK both get a kill. But now it's just Prod as NBK hits the floor. And so low HP. He'll die to pretty much one bullet from any gun. Looks like he might go for the res on NBK, but there's pressure being felt. He will get it through. Hitting the prox alarm with 12 seconds left. Now the defense knows exactly where they are. They only have to land one bullet on each of these attackers. Currently playing paintball. Prod the first to go down. NVK to follow. And aerial arise. Take round six with ease. A fairly standard half in terms of rounds. But altogether, aerial arise just once again really playing into their strengths. Off the bat of, in particular, a really good opening kill by Tones. We did see at the beginning of round one. They wanted to make sure that Razor could stay alive when he went for that first floor clear. So they had multiple people backing him up. Although on round six, Razor just kind of hopped in by himself and didn't have any direct backup once the call was given that someone is beginning to enter the first floor and could probably push away courts on house stairs. That's where Tones comes into play on that heavy roam. He wide swings as Razor's probably not expecting him to be there, gets a pretty good opening kill, and now the rest of Air Arise can stay over by that single wall near top house a hell of a lot longer. And overall, that carries down to once again the fallback on your main extension and then that also proceeds into your anchor game being extremely stronger as well, having less players to work with as well, forcing a lot more one-for-one -one confrontations that are going to go the way of Aerial Arise. It just was not a good round from the get-go of one shot, even though they did give it their all. But now they get to go on the defensive side, and they had the exact same split against Reality TV. Most people would say a stronger team in comparison to Aerial Arise. So we could see that exact same comeback storyline for one shot and maybe even a win for them rather than just an overtime loss if they play their cards right. Perhaps. Freak on Ash, though, has been incredibly scary so far as Ash has made a return. That was, uh, I think that was actually, was that before your time, John? Freak on, on the original Ash? That I was think, terrifying. Uh, yeah, Freak period was just before my time. Ah. I was not even on the platform. I see. see. Well, now you're being introduced to him. So you can yeah. imagine, freak, so freak skill now, imagine that, but on prime R4C. It was terrifying, and wow, Tones wins that? Wow, all right, Razor is gonna get put in his place by Daddy Tones. And uh, Azami, first death, not what you want is the defense. No, that is going to definitely cripple the fact that they only have one shield and Aruni Surya's as their main line of defense to make sure that shield cannot get broken for free. No one's playing bottom dragon either. So a lot of ground can be covered in milliseconds here for aerial arise and only a singular nitro cell. So I could imagine that, you know, Rome presence underneath isn't gonna be all too explosive, no pun intended, unless one shot have perfect information with those black eye cameras, maybe for the late round, saving the best for last, perhaps. Air Rise still having plenty of time to continue their way closer and closer towards that top dragon position, throwing out tons of flashes to cover more ground, and across the ways, Reed is also getting himself ready towards Geisha. Everything coming together here for Air Rise, but that shield is still alive and well, and Prod, while well, him still having Nitro Cell, could maybe throw it up to buy even more time, perhaps. Not just that, but the time, like you said, Getting lower, a minute left now, and Aerial Arise have not yet touched Dragon or Drum. The C4 goes out. Oh, it's disabled. But, yeah, did it get disabled by the EMP? I'm not... Right next to the AoE, yeah. I think it was I'm in not range. not quite sure, and then I think it got shot because the overlay says there's no more. So, that C4 wasted. Dumping more utility in is the attack. I think they finally get that shield and force Prod back. 40 seconds left. Aerial Arise finally making their way in next target should be drum geisha has been opened as well there's one lone defender against a one lone attacker over in that corner of the map but a very good long angle could stop course from moving his way in it's held by the dmr of nbk the perfect long range weapon to hold that but nbk is going to take some damage maybe forced to fall off opening up an opportunity for courts to move in otherwise jay now hopping over towards the top black barricade finishes off nbk tones another kill of his own despite the low hp prod and swaylin in a two versus five make it just prod stuck inside the site stuck behind the half wall nothing he can do to stop the plant and eating a bullet they know exactly where it is they'll start to 
collapse, and Prod can do nothing against the unstoppable tide of the attack. Aerial Arise take the first round of the new switch. And instead of Aerial Arise just sticking to their their original gut plan of going in through that catwalk area near Dragon leading into the back of Chi Room to get that plant down in towards that bomb site. You have a majority of your player base continuing to rotate over into Geisha. You have somebody as well work their way into top black as someone tends to usually sit there for that long angle, looking down all the way from that T doorway to make sure no one can just get side control for free unless they want to go to the backwards breach. You had everyone completely drop plan A and pretty much going through something completely new. They noticed it was a lot weaker over towards the karaoke bomb site, so they dogpiled in towards Geisha Room. And again, they have that one player in towards top black doorway as well to work a couple of picks and then allow themselves to potentially get that post plant down while having the rest of the defense who are still stuck in T Room now forced to play a retake and basically just be trapped in a death box, essentially. Really good change up there by Air of the Rise and really good play by them for just getting ready to be aggressive and just take those one-for-one -one gunfights, knowing that they have to win to continue to move on. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? I think I think so. I could yeah, lie to you and say I don't. Why would you do that? Uh, comedic effect. Reed Adams is on Amaru. Maybe. What is the play with Amaru? Maybe up the hatch? You can get up the hatch and get the desk plant. While there's someone covering the crossfire over yeah. on the balcony, maybe yeah. someone Ying Candel's through office or um, potentially through the single wall. That could work. Oh yeah, I think Amaro is gonna probably go through that yeah, hatch. I think I think you're downstairs. right on that call. Yeah. The only thing he's got to worry about though is the Valkyrie downstairs. But he's since backed off. The wall being open though means the bandits force back down. Prod takes wow. the fight, and Tones is there, laying on his belly to shut down the old man. Five versus four. Two minutes left. Ariel making great time, and Freak will go downstairs to assist Reed. And one shot, frankly, have no idea what kind of composition that Ariel are running into. They've only had to deal with the Thermite so far and the Zofia to deny that bandit trick early on. Here comes the first of many potential Candelas, and I believe we're going to see a lot of sight presence in seconds. Oh, the Amaru right at the hatch. I freaking called it. He'll go in for the planet desk. In comes the rest of the attack through the breach. Tone's the first to go down, but it delays so much time. Plant completed. Quartz with a kill. Traded by Swaylin. Three versus three. Sure, they got the plant down, but it costed them a lot of bodies. First lion call goes out. Again, delays so much time. Reed has escaped. He's back downstairs, but Freed one pump by the shotgun. Jay gets the refrag. He's looking for the other, and he'll nab it. Jay with two, Swaylin the last alive. He's got to try and stick it. They've got the pings. Is it going to be in time? Jay moves on in. Three for the lion, the plant for Reed, and a brilliant attack from Ariel. Incredible coverage by Ariel Arise, and like we had both suspected, a very swift rush play that worked out pretty successfully. At the beginning, at least, too, having Tones once again solidify some sort of early entry and weaken that position near top house, it does force a little bit more concern for one shot to change their positions and focus a bit more on that portion of the map, less of a roam presence as a whole and less of an extension over near that you know, main dragon side slash drum that you tend to see for a default attacking clear. The rest of Air the Rise begin to set up again with those cutoff angles to make sure that the Amaru has more room to breathe and so they can get ready to open up the rest of the bomb site as well. The utility spam, perfectly timed by Air of the Rise. They get just enough control to get that defuse down. And once you get the plant down, so long as you have one or two people outside, you're pretty safe because there are a lot of repel positions that are really difficult to deal with for the defense trying to play for a retake, trying to cross over that just line of death is never a good thing. Unless you can have someone maybe run out but again, there was someone playing underneath, so that wouldn't really be a major option for one shot either. And now speaking of one shot, looking down the barrel of match and series point, I thought personally this game would be a lot closer, but so far, Air of the Rise have really been proving themselves on Skyscraper. Yeah, I just want to say, uh, hold it. I said uh, Ariel, we're probably going to smoke one shot. Just because I think they're, not because one shot's bad, but I think Ariel's play style just really really defeats one shot because Ariel very aggressive but also like it's a uh, it's controlled 
still structured enough. And uh, remember the critical point? Which tones were we going to get? Well, uh, he's 12 and 3. As uh, I wouldn't say full support. He's like only been support on like he's done the, the second the, half. Like he's, yeah, on defense, he's let loose. And then on attack, like he gets the wall open and then runs in. Yeah. That's what I, that's what I love about tones. Like he'll, he'll do his job and then like, and then it's like Ariel just lets him off the leash. And it's so, it's so entertaining to watch. I mean, if you have a, you know, competent shot caller besides just like your quote unquote support player that's running the thermite, you can yeah. frag out pretty effectively on pretty especially, much any hard breach. Especially because I, I, like Reed can IGL. Jay has always been, uh, you know, a uh, support shot caller. Uh, at this point, you know, Freak and Quartz have enough experience that they can probably shot call as well. <laughs> I'm sure Tones is just enjoying the ride. But speaking of, Quartz, the first death to prod downstairs. He was hiding behind the, uh, the little thing next to the toilet in the bathroom. And Quartz, unaware, will be punished. I think one of the only entry engagements we have seen Quartz get into this whole game. Interesting that that happens this late yeah. into the matchup. He can tend to be really aggro in some situations. He got, been, uh, he got an leash. opening kill in round two and then nothing since then. Ah, I did write Quartz really small on that. That was onto Swain. <laughs> That's right. It's also Fair only enough. the uh, only the third opening kill of the game for one shot. Yeah, that's uh, really upsetting too, since they were pretty good about getting opening kills, at least against Reality TV. And even when they didn't, they were still pretty consistent on trades. Can't really say the same thing right now against Air of the Rise, as they're now just about ready to get this office wall opened on up. The Buck Skeleton Key to make sure no one can bandit trick it with the extra assist of that secondary EMP. So, not the worst start for them so far, besides not having an extra set of grenades and now being down to just about one. They're going to have to clear out this extension pretty much the old fashioned way, as Jonah would say. It's going to be tough. One nade, Very. one gone six. Because Reed is not playing Ash, he's on Osa this time. So you really got to make sure your utility is on point to get rid of this shield. Freak already taking some damage thanks to the angle being held by Prod. And Aerial Arise certainly don't have as much time as they did in the previous attack of this site. We are down to 45 seconds. That is how slow Quartz's death has made this attack. They flash out the shield. It looks like they'll start to move on through Dragon. Meanwhile, Freak on the other side, working his way towards Drum, the Aruni gate in front of him being burned. 30 seconds left. Surprised one shot weren't challenging this harder to delay more time, but still, the time is low no matter what. 23 seconds. Freak making his way in. Reed and Jay are touching the wall to the site. They're making sure there's no one downstairs that's going to screw him over. Razor might have an angle. There's not quite enough yet. A C4, I believe, just went out, and there it is! Another Kilo, a triple kill! Prod finishes it off! Two for Prod and three for Kilo off of one Nitro Cell to keep one shot alive. And for one shot as a whole, they just didn't grant Aerial Rise any opportunities to get that first kill to set the precedent in a right way for Aerial Rise. It was a very, like you mentioned, a very slow attack for them. It took so much out of their own resource pool just to get the office wall opened up. And the sad thing is nobody was even playing there. Everyone had already fallen back after that first initial kill that Prod had found onto Quartz. And it's still the exact same treacherous extension we have seen pretty much every single round for Skyscraper. Now added in with the mix of even more Kiva barriers to force pretty much a, an ungodly angle that Aerial Rise are just too uncomfortable to take near top house looking in through Dragon by that shield. They did kind of have to funnel themselves in through Drum, especially with the smoke grenades, denying them of entering in through the back doorway leading through T Room towards top Dragon. And that set up Kilo for a perfect Nitro Cell toss that probably found a lot more than what he had probably expected, despite it eventually leading down to just one singular choke point and one shot we're concerned about. A really well needed round for them, but still three more to go to potentially proc overtime. Quite the birth for Aerial Arise right now in this game. And, uh, well, office went really well, but sad to say, they're not going for the Amaru play. Makes me a little sad. Prod, very early engagement around that little coat check doorway. Nothing will come of it. 
the attack's next target, of course, is going to be the single wall that Tones is posted up next to. Likely going to be a nade through the floor to try and clear the bandit battery, as well as any possible bandit himself behind that wall. Sometimes we also see, like we see right now, Tones starting the exothermic before it goes off. I don't know if the EMP missed or what, but Tones finally gets it down. No bandit trick. As Prod knows, that's a death sentence. And thus, the VIP wall has been opened. Really well timed Nate as well. Played by Freak. I think that actually connected. Maybe not the secondary EMP or probably yeah, I think just it was had the, a second. I think it was the Nade. Yeah, second bandit battery, I believe, to follow up to maybe deny that EMP from working out. And once again, the vertical presence showing here for Air of the Rise. Except now it's not an extension, it's the actual bomb site. So getting this opened up at the minute 40 mark is not bad whatsoever. They just have to worry about that potential mini bar presence and Maybe the looming threat that top house can still be held to an extent. It's just, again, with that single wall, it's a little more challenging here for one shot. I like the bottom-up approach that Ariel currently have with Jay, ensuring that, again, there's no one going to be close on that wall. He's got a lot of opportunity to try and get a frag up into Museum as well. Prod already taking some damage from the Skeleton Key, but they spot him on the Alibi. There's not enough of an angle for Prod to capitalize. Case has been dropped by Tones. Maybe leaving it for Reed to pick up. Maybe he'll be going for a uh, backwards Osa plant. That could definitely be the move. But in doing so, I guess at least he wasn't carrying the case anymore. Prod, or Tones, is the first dead. Kilo puts him in the grave. And now it's Reed's job to try and get that case down. Quartz responds with a and with an explosive of his own. He'll even up the man count. In comes the flashes. A C4 ripped and missing. The Osa shield goes down. Reed in a very good position to plant. I don't think there's anything to stop this. No impacts, no C4. Jay on the cover gets one. Jay on the cover gets two. And it's a two versus four. Post plant. Swainling gets one onto Reed, making it a two versus three. But again, this post plant so hard to fight against because of all the repels outside. No one's on it just yet, though. And Swainling takes advantage of it on the freak. Jay is still outside. He's got eyes on the diffuser. Quartz puts us in a one versus two, and Razor is one HP. Not a lot he can do in this situation with 20 seconds left and such low HP. I mean, the shield is right there, but this angle completely exposed to Jay. Three kills for the buck. Ariel lock out the map and overtake one shot in the year standings. Impressive showing by Ariel Arise, a map we know that they have brought out in the past and have done well on, but they haven't played it just yet in stage three up until now. But again, impressive work altogether, mixing a lot of, I suppose, just regular strats and then a little bit of an offhand and orthodox plays as well that all seem to do the trick just fine against one shot who really didn't get their footing pretty much anywhere except for you know, a round win on Tea Room and then Office as well. Not all too much to show here in this best of one series, but overall, you mentioned the, I guess, consistency that we had by Air of the Rise. It was definitely here today against One Shot. Really, everyone did their job perfectly. We had plenty of the hard destruction going down. Not only that, but Tones was fragging out of his mind a majority mm -hmm. of that game. That was like the only round where he didn't really have all too much impact on the round, even with the walls being opened up. And even then, you had people like Jay, you know, stepping up when needed to. You had Freak as well, getting into the fray. Really, everything just went according to plan for Air of the Rise most of the round. So not too much trouble yep. deemed towards them. And honestly, a little shocked that one shot didn't bring more to the table here as they kept it incredibly close with Reality TV on this map, but couldn't replicate that against Air of the Rise. Yeah, and I think that's a... Um... Big point, right? Even though Tones didn't have a lot of impact on the scoreboard in that last round, he still got the wall open. And that's what we got to focus on. Tones does his job before he goes and finds frags. And a lot of the times when he's getting entries on the Thermite, as we've seen, he's not hunting. The kills are coming to him, right? There was Razor yeah. peeking out a barricade. Tones just reacted. Tones opens the wall, just prones, prod peeks him freebie. So Tones isn't even getting super aggressive. So, you know, CJ asked, what Tones are we getting today? clearly the one the better player the one who can both do his job and play with the team as well as frag out everyone on ariel was doing their job and as tanner highlighted as well the entry game from ariel it's been strong for one shot ariel's been more of a 50 50 they were in control of the entry game seemingly all map even when one shot was getting those kills ariel were right there to trade it back or still win the round in most cases. But anyway, that's it for game number three. We'll go back to the desk before our final match of the day. 
This might have been one of the most complete games we've seen a team bring uh, on an individual play day. I mean, outside of like what, what RTBs every single play day, but <laughs> Tanner, like it, I think the biggest thing was, was we saw Ariel Arise bring this like kind of three headed dragon of Reed, Freak, and especially Tones and one shot brought Swalen for a couple of rounds and they just really didn't have an answer to all the pressure that Ariel Arise was bringing. I mean, I felt like one shot did a, uh, an okay job on their attack half, especially when they got their two rounds. Um, and then that timeout from Dauntless kind of just really sealed the deal for Ariel Arise. It was like this focus that they needed to get, they were able to talk things over and it just seemed like there was no real answer. I mean, other than Kilo's, you know, triple C4 that he got that one time. Um, there wasn't really an answer. And there it is right there the on timing. stream. timing. Yeah, the great timing. But one of the things that I really liked about Aerial Rise on, on this half in particular was how they were executing into sight and specifically on their office execution. They were able to get down some very creative plays uh, or plants with uh, with creative ways of getting the plant down with the Osha Shield one round, with the Maru coming up the hatch while Ying Candelas are going off the other round. It just felt like Ariel was in complete control and even good heads up play like tones getting entry kills on thermite you know other thermite players who got their job might have let their guard down but tones was ready for both of those engagements and were able to put one shot on the back but as a result um mm -hmm. it's just a, it's just a solid performance all, all, all around from real rise I, I don't know about you cookies but i can't help but notice almost somewhat of a parallel to the previous game of aqualix luminosity where you know, one shot seemed to be in the fight early on, but where Ariel Arise and, and to Tanner's point, you know, that timeout, they managed to sustain that pressure and keep it going through every round. Whereas one shot, those early little successes that they had, they didn't seem to be able to translate them and keep them going. Um, let me, let me give y'all an analogy. Oh boy. I love analogies. Y'all ever sure. go, y'all ever go to McDonald's and have a Sprite that's like, really no no no, no 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 the best no right. you think it'd be oh. the best right you're hyped up it should be mcdonald's right it's supposed to be vibrant and amazing yeah it's that it's, ratio but it's flat it's oh. a flat soda mm. and there's mm. and it's it's just that's what it feels like watching one shot right now it's supposed it's an overhyped soda that's you think it's gonna be hyped up and delicious and it's flat you look at ariel rice we're talking about how innovative and how much dynamicism and experimentation and all this other stuff these great executes clash the shields osa the planting the air one shot just looked like there's boring there's boring today <laughs> it's uninspired nothing new nothing crazy their their attack ops are just so boring it, it it's the best way i can describe it it was boring they played boring Arrow eyes actually played to like like they were like they're learning stuff as they play they're learning new things they're like that I, I mean how else can I put it? It was uninspiring it, performance from one shot. I get innovative, it. innovative, carbonated, and oh so sweet. That's what they are right now, a delicious soda. We're gonna talk to Smitty right now and ask him a few questions. <laughs> Smitty, I Yo. mean, is there much to say about this one? This was a, a bit of a steamroll for you guys. Yeah, I'd say it was a bit of a steamroll. You know, it was like I'm not sure if you guys watched JoJo, but it was like Dio when he used that rolling, that roller road uh, ability. You know what I'm talking about? I, I personally uh, don't, but <laughs> well, you guys maybe know. some of the audience does. But I I want to bring up the creativity on some of those plants when we saw the Amaru zip up get the plant down and then later on that beautiful uh osa shield you guys just trying things out you getting fun you getting comfortable oh yeah yeah um you know we're just testing things out you know uh just seeing what we can cook up and seeing what works you know on game day um mm -hmm. I don't know, i'm pretty not sure if it's confirmed. i think we're confirmed for playoffs uh, for finals already yeah oh. okay okay so. For playoffs, not for finals. You gotta, you gotta fight your way there. Uh, wait, wait. I thought they were the same thing. Uh, I guess I must be confused. Well, there's multiple rounds. Oh yeah. Okay. No, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I understand. I understand. <laughs> okay. I guess semantics. We're arguing over semantics here. For but sure, is this sure. is this the team feel? Is this the team that wants to to bring like 
this is what you want going into playoffs. This is how you envision yourselves playing like this going into playoffs. Or is there more? Is there more to improve upon? Hey, all I gotta say, stay two. You know what I'm saying? Stay two. <laughs> Will do. I can't. I can't reveal anything like that. <laughs> okay. Well, let's I'll just take say, your word for it. Let's just say. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh boy, what's happening here? It'll be a little bit of light work, yeah? Okay. Yeah. I think we're done here, Smitty. <laughs> I think we're done here. All right. <laughs> Thanks I appreciate a lot, it. Smitty. I appreciate Thanks it, Thanks a lot. Hey, hey. We'll talk hey, soon. One thing, yeah? one thing. I just want to say thank you to all the fans for watching us. You guys are beasts. Thank you again. We couldn't do it without you guys. Mwah. All right. Well, we love you doing the heavy lifting. Thank you, Smitty. All right. That's what I do, baby. That's what I do. <laughs> Have a all good right. one. <laughs> oh, we man, all need that, a Smitty in our life. <laughs> that interview was almost as action packed as the game itself was. Okay, folks, don't go anywhere. We've got one more game left on the day. It's going to be Vipers taking on Favelas in just a few minutes.